It has always baffled me how weird water, the most common liquid on earth, is. My mind continually fumbles for the correct words whenever I try to describe just how truly strange this substance can be. Ever since I was a child, I've always had a fascination with nature, particularly the forest filled with huge green trees that shrouded babbling brooks and quiet ponds. Eventually, once I was old enough, I began going on camping trips to remote areas where I could explore this uncultivated terrain. The wilderness gave me a way to escape from reality, a chance to experience amazing occurrences on my own without anyone there to ruin them. Perhaps, if I had not followed that passion of mine, my life would have been different in ways I could not have possibly imagined. In fact, I would still have something that actually resembled a normal life, instead of the hell I live in now. Oh, I was so ignorant back then, unaware of everything I had, unaware of how good things were for me until I lost them all. I was on a trip to a particularly remote forest area when I found the pond. It was an odd pond, the water in it was crystal clear, and not a single breeze nor creature disturbed its crystalline surface. There was an eerie silence that consumed the area, and all the nearby plants seemed almost to be pointing away from the water, as if trying to avoid it. What struck me as the most interesting, however, was the decrepit wooden sign with words faintly carved into it. I couldn't read what was written on the sign, but that wasn't too unexpected considering I was in a foreign country whose language I wasn't too familiar with. All it did was let me know someone had at one point been in the area. Even then though, the sign seemed to radiate both a mysterious and an incredibly ancient aura. Something about this whole area felt off. The atmosphere reeked of a chilling, haunting peace, and a sense of significance that was more powerful than anything I'd ever experienced. Indeed, it was far greater than the usual surreal sense of awe I got when hiking. To this day, I don't really know what it was that compelled me to drink from that pond. I've told myself that it was part of the pond's magic, or that it was just an intense, instinctive curiosity that led me to do it. But deep down I know, I have no one but myself to blame. I feel my current fate is half what I deserve for blindly following impulses. I mean, I'd heard the stories of the parasites and diseases which lurked in the water. I wasn't so ignorant that I didn't know to filter the liquid before I drank it. And yet, that is exactly what I did. It has been five years since then. Five very long years. A lot has changed, and I would give nearly anything to go back to a normal life. I cannot understand how or why I'm still alive. I don't know what was up with that water, but I believe it was the cause of my current fate. I think that in some twisted, hellish way, it has given me immortality. Immortality. It seems to be the best description of my current state. I mean, it should be physically impossible for me to be alive right now, and yet I still exist, and will most likely keep on existing. Now I'm not here to tell you the ailments of the classic idea of immortality, where you stay the same age forever, are invincible, and the only ailment is that anyone you become attached to dies but you don't. Believe me, I would happily deal with that. That is nothing compared to what I've been through. I didn't notice much of a change the first few days after I drank the water. Indeed, it actually felt good. I felt as if I'd become more connected to my body. I could feel with a new clarity the blood coursing through my veins, my clothes against my skin, and the gentle breezes blowing through my hair. The stage of bliss didn't last long though, and it was around the time that I'd returned to my apartment that the pain truly began to set in. It was, and still is, horrible. 
Imagine a life where you didn't have to eat or breathe, where you could be free from all of life's routine constraints that only seem to hold you down. Imagine getting to live forever with an unaging body, essentially being immortal. Sounds great, doesn't it? That is until you realize that while you don't need to eat or sleep, your body still feels the pangs of hunger and exhaustion. However, you can't eat to stop the pain. For every time you try to quench your hunger by eating, a searing, stinging pain washes over the area as the substance travels down a raw, irritated digestive tract, ripping off the outer layers of cells, cells which will never be replaced in the process. That is the plight I face every day. I can't eat no matter how bad the hunger gets. The pain from actually eating is way worse. From what it feels like, and from what I can comprehend, it seems that each cell in my body lasts individually forever. I feel a faint tingling connection to what seems like every single one, no matter where they are. My body is, in effect, the same body it was years ago. Based on what I can see, and on my ability to comprehend whatever is happening, all cellular reproduction has stopped. Ever since I drank that water, no new cells have appeared, I think, though I haven't actually gotten the chance to see them up close. The point I'm trying to make is that nothing is healing or growing back. Open wounds stay open, and never become scars. I have no clue how this is possible, or exactly what really is behind this, and I don't think I'll ever find out. The fountain of youth, water that grants mortality, that is what I like to call the pond, and maybe that is what I have discovered. I mean, I technically have an age today. Perhaps some people knew of its existence at one point, and perhaps out of spite, they created a story that would encourage others to seek its presence and be caught in its eternal trap. This is one of my favorite theories to ponder, though it is likely too far-fetched to be true. Sometimes I like to imagine that my case is one of the first out of many, that I might be the patient zero of the future apocalypse. This thought makes me feel like I still have some significance in this world, that I'm not just an abandoned useless sack of bones. I also like the idea that there either are or will be others. It makes me feel less alone. Whatever the real case, I don't know, and these are just musings I've had because I can't and don't have much more to do than think. I ran away from my apartment about two weeks after I'd returned from vacation. By then I'd lost a good portion of my skin, and I'd even had to wrap a couple places in bandages to stop the bleeding. I bought a new phone, headphones, and two pretty good quality solar powered chargers. I didn't know what else to do at the time. Whatever was going on most certainly wasn't natural, and I had no way to explain myself. I found an isolated pocket of attic type space inside what was either a Starbucks or a McDonald's that was well over two towns away. I can't quite remember where I am. It has been so long, and all I know is that the place has free Wi-Fi. There is a little hole through which sunlight shines. It is both something beautiful to look at, and a great energy source for the chargers, and for that, I am very grateful. No one has ever gone back here, indeed it would barely be wide enough for the average person to get into. I can still fall asleep sometimes, and that is one pleasure I greatly appreciate. Sleeping provides a distraction, and sleeping and trying to fall asleep are how I spend most of my time these days. I used to listen to music, letting the soothing rhythm carry me away with it, and I still do sometimes, though my second charger has begun to show signs of wear, and I doubt it will last much longer. Everything has its time, I suppose. Everything, except...
except me. But then again, I don't know, and maybe my time will come eventually. I'm so tired all the time now, which I suppose is a relief since the delirious exhaustion lessens the pain a little. In fact, I doubt my legs even work anymore, considering how hard it is to move my fingers alone. You don't realize how often you lose body cells until they stop growing back. Every time you shower, every time you scratch an itch, every time you eat, hell, even every time you barely move. Not much is left of me anymore. I cut myself once around the time I'd first gone back from the vacation. It didn't stop bleeding on its own and I had to wrap a bandage around it so that I would not lose more blood. I can still feel the emptiness of the missing blood. It aches and itches from underneath what is left of my skin, by now just muscle and bone. I can still feel what seems to be every cell. Even as my body falls apart and its mass spreads everywhere, a bizarre sense of connection lingers. One day, I think that all that will be left of me is a completely unrecognizable, sentient pile of goo, only capable of feeling pain. Eventually, many, many years after that, the building I'm in will decay, or perhaps someone will find me, and from there I will be spread all throughout the world. I look upon this fate with a surreal resignation. After all, I have always loved to travel the world, and it seems in a way that is what I may spend forever doing. I imagine that after such a long period of time, I will have become accustomed to the pain, and that by then I will barely notice it. Oh, how I eagerly hope this is the case. My fingers are merely spindly stubs now, and the rest of my limbs look like thin sticks, and they all hurt so bad. I can't see too well anymore, and the last time I tried using my voice, it sounded like an awful, wailing moan. Overall, I don't really know why I'm writing this. I've told myself it was because I needed to warn others, but I know that is simply not true. To some degree, I hope that through this, I will be able to find others, if there are others, though I know that is unlikely. I know that I will not be able to move much longer, for typing this alone has taken weeks due to the pain. In reality, I know that all this is, is my last ditch effort to communicate with people, and to finally pen down and thus let go of everything I've kept in my head. I've heard that it takes nearly seven years for all the body cells to replace themselves, and by that measure, I don't have much time left in which I will remain functional. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's narration. I want to give a huge thanks to last month's $5 and up patrons. Starless, Tara, William L, Linda H, Christopher B, Hunter D, Letty M, Ronnie K, Lake S, Meg C, Tim D28, Mr. Creeps, and all of the $2 and up patrons on screen as well. All of your support makes these narrations possible, and I appreciate it a ton. If you'd like to join these lovely ghouls, I'd appreciate it if you'd check out my Patreon page. For just $1 a month, you'll get an exclusive narration that will never, ever be uploaded to my channel. Usually, one a bit too extreme for YouTube. So that's at least one extra video every month for just a dollar, if not more. For $2 a month, you'll get thanked in the end scroll of every video, and for just $5 a month, I'll shout you out at the end of every video personally. You also get exclusive Discord roles for those perks as well. If you'd like to chat with me for a bit, you can join me on a monthly live stream for just $10 a month and get a signed merch sticker for $25 a month. And if you're in the market for some horrifying shirts and hoodies, you can head on over to my Teespring store in the description as well. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Second Clancy. I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time. Have a good night, everybody. Cheers.